Hello fellow dreamers, in today's video I am answering, Annie answers, your questions. My husband and I are gluten-free. The reason we are gluten-free is because back in 2011, we were at a, um, a doctor that just routinely checked his patients for a laundry list of things, and one of them was gluten intolerance, so celiac, um, gliadin antibodies, and the other gluten antibodies that you would find in blood tests. We both had the blood tests, and we both showed gluten intolerance, so my doctor said, you've got to cut the gluten from your diet. Okay, so there we have it, that's why. So if you suspect that you need to be gluten-free as well, you just don't feel good when you have bread or whatever it is, uh, make sure you have the test done. You know, that will give you concrete evidence as to if it's gluten that's giving you issues or something else, and you can work with your doctor around that. Now, everything that I say, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a registered dietitian, I'm not a nutrition consultant or anything like that, so always clear your stuff with your doctor. This is just what we did and what's working well for us. So after our diagnosis, um, the next part of this question was, was it overwhelming cutting gluten from your diet? Um, it really was not. My sister was already gluten-free, and so I had kind of a suspicion that I was going to need to be gluten-free. So I kind of prepared myself for that. I got really well-versed in knowing what items have gluten in them, where items that are not so commonly thought about would have gluten in them, like soy sauce and blue cheese, things like that. A lot of times you don't really think about those kind of things. Um, and so I, I did a lot of reading up on it. And um, Pinterest is a fantastic resource to give you just a snapshot of things that contain gluten, words to watch out for, brands that are fantastic, brands to stay away from. So check out Pinterest, really great boards and ideas on there. What I did when we were first diagnosed is I donated any food item that I had in my house that was unopened to like a food pantry um, in my area. And any item that was already opened, I asked family if they wanted that, my parents, my in-laws, and um, anything they didn't want then went in the trash. So I got rid of everything that contained wheat, rye, barley, oats, because they were not gluten-free oats at that point. Um, pastas, pre-made, frozen whatevers, um, sauces, things like that. I really cleared 100% out my pantry. I kept things like fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and that kind of thing um, that were naturally gluten-free, like meats and stuff, but everything else I got rid of. Um, I also really cleaned my colander, like you strain pasta out of slotted spoons, really cleaned those well too. I got rid of my baking pans and bought new ones, and I cleaned my toaster oven really, 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 really well. If I had one of those regular toasters that you just put bread into and whatever, I would have completely gotten rid of that and gotten a new toaster, but I didn't have one of those at that time. And I also really made sure that my pans were cleaned I did a, a, a really good scrub down of my pantry because, you know, flour gets everywhere. It's just kind of the way it goes. So I just did a really deep clean of my kitchen. When restocking my pantry, I focused on things like pastured meats and organic meat, um, free range eggs, organic vegetables, organic fruits, nuts, seeds, uh, gluten-free grains. So things like white rice, brown rice, uh, buckwheat, gluten-free oats, that kind of stuff. And then as far as the prepackaged condiments and um, if I wanted a cookie or pasta or bread or anything like that, I stuck with those items that were labeled certified gluten-free. And you'll know that by a circle with a GF on it on the packaging. So like I said before, gluten can kind of hide in things. Um, soy sauce is not gluten-free unless you get a gluten-free version, like a tamari, it'll say gluten-free on there. Um, blue cheese is questionable. A lot of times blue cheese culture is started on bread, and so, you know, to each his own for the blue cheese thing. My sister eats blue cheese okay. I just haven't touched it because I know that fact, so I don't know. But if she does okay with it, 
everybody's different, I guess. Um, a lot of marinades, you really got to watch out for them, especially if they have soy sauce in them. Uh, the other thing to watch out for is sausages and um, sometimes different types of casings or like the um, meat that's inside the sausage will have a thickener in it and a lot of times it could be wheat. MSG, monosodium glutamate, something else to watch out for because that can be derived from wheat as well. So it's best to stick towards those products that are labeled gluten-free on them. Now, um, certified gluten-free is much better than just reading the words gluten-free on them. Cheerios got in trouble for this. They made gluten-free Cheerios, right? Cheerios are made out of oats. Oats, on their own, do not contain gluten. The processing of the oats could cross-contaminate the oats to make them no longer gluten-free. And I'll get into cross-contamination in a second. So Cheerios is under fire by the celiac community because people ate these gluten-free, not certified gluten-free. They didn't have that circle with the GF on it. It just said the words gluten-free or now gluten-free or whatever on it. And celiac people got sick, like every single one of them. So. Moral of the story, stick with anything that says certified gluten-free. If it says that certification on there, that means that product has been tested and comes up as less than 20 parts per million of gluten. So anything under 20 parts per million generally does not affect celiac or gluten-free folks. So let's talk cross-contamination. Um, this is uh, something that's really hard for people to understand, and I'm gonna try to paint this in a way that makes sense. So, um, Cross-contamination can happen when, let's say you are served a salad in a restaurant and the server realizes, oh no, this person is gluten-free, but there's croutons on them, and they just pick the croutons off. That person that is gluten intolerant or celiac can still get sick from that salad um, or have a reaction, whatever the reaction is, um, because there may have been crumbs left over from those little croutons. Uh, a really good way to paint this is if you think of gluten, like bread or whatever, as raw chicken. You know, when you handle raw chicken, we're taught, you know, wash your hands immediately. Don't let the raw chicken juices touch anything else. Don't let it get on vegetables. Use separate cutting boards, that kind of stuff. There is no difference at all between handling raw chicken <laughs> and avoiding that whole cross-contamination thing with handling bread or wheat-containing products and the whole cross-contamination thing. It is identical. So you wouldn't just like pick up a piece of chicken raw, plop it on a salad, take it off the salad, and then eat it you know, eat that salad. You just wouldn't do it, you know? So it's the same kind of thing. If you get any kind of bready, wheat-y, rye, barley, any kind of residue at all onto, said, any other gluten-free product, it's still gonna be contaminated. If you're sharing a household with folks that are not gluten-free, and you are, I recommend getting your own butter, your own um, peanut butter, your own jelly, um, Anything that could have the potential of somebody dipping a knife into, spreading it on a piece of bread, putting the knife back into whatever it is to get more, that action just contaminated that other item. So butter, for example. So I'd highly recommend getting your own, making sure that it is clearly labeled or on some certain side of the refrigerator so the rest of your family knows, paws off, these are mine. Um, so there are items now as compared to 2011, where there weren't a whole lot of these things, gluten-free items are coming up at, in leaps and bounds now. You can even go to Walmart and get gluten-free, whatever the product is, anything you want. Um, and they're starting to taste just as equal to their gluten-containing counterpart. In my city, actually, there are completely gluten-free bakeries, and they actually taste better than just normal old 
wheat containing bakeries like fantastic it's so good um so do some research in your area and see if there are any gluten-free support groups we have one in my area here um there's a gluten-free uh app that's called find me gluten-free that will tell you about different restaurants in your area if you're traveling there's so many resources out there now as compared to when i started being gluten-free that now if you like if you're starting being gluten-free at this point in time you are very blessed. <laughs> favorite brands. There are a number of favorite brands that I kind of stick with when I am doing my shopping. Um, for condiments like mustard, mayonnaise, um, ketchup, barbecue sauce, that kind of thing, I really like Annie's. Annie's is fantastic. They have awesome labeling on their products. Um, for soups, I really like Amy's. I also like Pacific brand soups as well. Um, I also like Imagine. So Imagine, Pacific, and Amy's are kind of my go-to soups. And I also make my own from scratch. For gluten-free um, like pastas and things like that, there's a really good corn pasta that I can't think of right now that the Italian restaurants at Disney use comes from Italy and it is escaping my mind. I can't remember, but Trader Joe's has a really good set. I think they have three or four different kinds of gluten-free brown rice pasta, which tastes just like the wheat containing counterpart. Um, there's lots of different pizza options too. Udi's is really good for both bread and pizza. They have their own pizza shells as well that you can buy. Donato's is offering gluten-free pizza pre-made on the Udi's crusts. Really delicious. Um, my favorite bread besides Udi's is Canyon Bakehouse. You can get that at, I think Target has that now, as does Whole Foods. Probably the best sandwich bread that is gluten-free out there. I love it. Um, let's see. What else? Justin's Peanut Butter Cups. Love those. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Lar Bars, always good. Epic Bars, fantastic. Kit Organic Bars, really good as well. Uh, Vans are really nice for um, if you want waffles or they have um, donuts to... Booties has muffins. So, I mean, these are just things like off the top of my head. Enjoy Life is a really nice brand of chocolate chips and uh, cookies, desserts. Tate's Bake Shop has really nice gluten-free cookies. If you're wanting to go gluten-free, but you're not allergic to gluten, I recommend sticking with a paleo kind of diet, which is um, meats, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, um, Anything that's kind of unprocessed in its whole state, stick with that. Um, you'll lose weight by doing that. Um, don't be afraid of fat that's nice, natural, organic fat like coconut oil or um, even lard, tallow, ghee, clarified butter, uh, grass-fed butter, that kind of stuff. Um, that's probably my best suggestion for you. Cut the sugar, stick with fats and whole unprocessed foods, and you'll have no problem losing weight whatsoever. All right, guys, well, I hope that answers that viewer's question. If you have any questions for me, whether it has anything to do with gluten or not, doesn't matter, leave them in the comment section below and I'd be happy to answer them in a future video. If you haven't already and you'd like to, hit that button down below, subscribe, so you never miss a Daily Dreamland video. Kiss someone you love today, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Ciao.